With the, uh, the score and the weather and everything being as it is, we are going to unveil another edition of what we like to call Media Guide Musings. And this is going to be a, a collaborative effort. We're going to start on page number 420 of the Mets Media Guide, the postseason section Very of nice. the Media Guide. The first page of the postseason section is the 1969 League Championship Series, Atlanta Braves versus New York Mets. Mets won series 3 0. In the club's first ever trip to the postseason, the Mets swept the best of five series versus Atlanta, three games to none. In game one, trailing 5 to 4 in the top of the eighth, New York rallied for five runs and a 9 to 5 win. Tom Seaver struggled, allowed five runs in seven innings, but earned the victory. In game two, two run home, run home runs by Tommy Agee, Ken Boswell, and Cleon Jones lifted the Mets to an 11 to 6 win. In front of 54,195 fans at Shea, I might add parenthetically, I was one of them. Wow. New York advanced to the World Series with a 7 to 4 victory in game three. The lead changed hands three times before Wayne Garrett's two run homer at the bottom of the fifth put the Mets ahead 5 to 4. Nolan Ryan hurled seven innings in relief. To pick up the win and complete the sweep. Boswell hit 333 with two home runs and five RBI, while AG batted 357 with two home runs and four RBI. Hank Aaron cracked a home run in each game and drove in seven runs for the Braves. We're going to move to page 422. Is it, is it my turn to read? Yeah, your turn. Page 422, if you have it at home, folks. This is the 1969 World Series, the Baltimore Orioles versus the Mets. One Mets, of course, won the series four to one. The New York Mets entered the 1969 World Series as heavy underdogs against Baltimore. After failing in game one, the Amazons rattled off four straight wins during their first championship, just eight years after the franchise was born. In game one, Baltimore's leadoff batter Don Buford smacked a home run off Tom Seaver. Mike Cuellar and the Orioles went on to a 4-1 triumph. But in game two, Jerry Kuzman tossed a saw six innings of six no-hit innings, sorry, before Paul Blair singled the lead off the seventh. With a game tied one to one in the ninth, Ed Charles, Jerry Grody, and Al Weiss strung together consecutive two-out singles to give New York a 2-1 lead. Kuzman then retired in first two batters in the ninth before walking the next two. Ron Taylor got the final out, retiring Brooks Robinson to even the series at one game. There's a lot to go. I think we should oh, pass it along. Want me to pick it up? Yeah, right here. It's like a satyr. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> a, nice. a raucous Shea crowd. That must be Gary. Of uh, 56,335. I wasn't there for that. Watch the Mets. Shut the out school. Baltimore. <laughs> five, don't interrupt. Shut out Baltimore. <laughs> five nothing in game three. Tom Tommy Agee hit a leadoff home run off Jim Palmer. The only leadoff home run the Hall of Famer would ever allow to put the Mets on a, on board early in the fourth. The Orioles threatened with runners at the corners. And two outs when AG made a running backhanded catch. You remember that, folks, at the warning track in left center to Rob El Rob Elrod Hendricks. In the seventh, Baltimore loaded the bases with two outs, and Paul Blair laced a high drive to right center. AG running full tilt caught the ball sprawling on the warning track. You all remember that. AG had made two of the greatest World Series catches ever. Just three innings apart. In game four, Tom Seaver outdueled Mike Cuellar in a thrilling 10 inning 2 1 victory. Don Clendenin belted a solo home run in the second. What a great pickup that was. In the second to give the Mets a 1 0 lead, which would hold up until the ninth. The Orioles pushed runners at first and third with one out. Brooks Robinson came up to the plate, laced a sinking line drive to right center. Ron Sabota made a full length diving catch. The tying run scored, but the brilliant catch prevented further damage. In the bottom of the 10th with runners at first and second and nobody out. J.C. Martin pinch hit for Seaver. Martin dropped a bunt down and Oriole pitcher Pete Rickert 
fielded the ball, but his throw hit Martin, and the ball caromed into right field, allowing Rod Gasper to score from second. The Mets were one win away from their first title, while Baltimore argued that Martin was outside the base path. Gary, you finish. Right in the middle of the sentence? Uh Oh, that's the end of the sentence. Uh, yeah, I, I didn't read that properly. I got you. By the way, congratulations for pronouncing Rod Gasper's name correctly, because most people mispronounce it. Call him Gaspar. Yes. But it's Gasper. Yes, that's Gaspar. very well done on your part. Thank I was you. very impressed. Thank you. I'm glad I didn't get that part. <laughs> the unthinkable occurred on October 16, 1969 at Shea. Behind a 5 to 3 victory, New York's lovable losers were champions. The Orioles led 3 0 early, but home runs by Clendenin and Weiss tied the game. In the eighth, Swoboda gave the Mets the lead with an RBI double. Kuzman induced future Mets manager Davey Johnson to fly out to Cleon Jones in left field for the final out. Jones, Sport Magazine, and Weiss, Baseball Writers of America, were the series MVPs. And so concludes page 422, the 1969 World Series. Very nice reading, We're guys. Pausing media guide musings so we can all catch our breath, think about what we've just learned. For you know those of us who were not alive 49 years ago. That's the story of the Mets' first ever postseason in 1969. What, so what have we learned? Um, I I knew about, but I know, didn't know exactly the whole J.C. Martin play. You know that Baltimore had argued that he was out of the baseline, which he was, by the way. Yes. Yeah. He was so inside the he line. Was, he was too far into fair territory inside the the running lane when he got hit by Rickard's throw. No question. But you know. Several things happened in that World Series that seemed to make it obvious that the Mets were fated to win. Mm, yes. Like the shoe polish play yes. in game five. That's right. Cleon Jones may or may not have been hit on the foot by a pitch. The ball ended up in the Mets' dugout, and Gil Hodges presented it to the home plate umpire. I think it was Augie Donatelli, yeah, if I'm not mistaken, time. with shoe polish on it, claiming that it was the ball that hit. Cleon's foot and they awarded Cleon first base which I think Earl Weaver went ballistic and then Don Clendenin followed with a home run. Strike three called Rosario is out on strikes. That's the second out of the inning. Well certainly Keith and I know that a lot of things have to go right and certain World Series to win them. I got the biggest kick out of that series watching on TV because remember the Mets were never a game of the week. Uh, back in those days when you didn't yeah. have baseball and you can watch every team anytime you want. You know you waited for game of the week and you you had an X amount of games very little games of, the, of the, your home team which for me was the Giants. What I remember is the people filing off the seven train down the down the stairs. Yeah that was in right right, right field. Over in right center field yeah. over the bullpen and I got the biggest kick out of that. 